Veronica Armstrong, and I'm obsessed with helping women emancipate themselves from limiting beliefs and behaviors that prevent them from operating in their zone of success. I'm a former corporate executive turned coach who gave it all up to help women rise above personal constraints and march boldly towards becoming the women they were born to be. My goal for this podcast is to make it a space where we shatter old thought patterns, challenge limiting beliefs, and break the chains of societal norms. Here, you are not defined by your past, but empowered by the potential of your future. So join us on this journey as we dig deep into a world of transformative insight and empowering information. Because remember, you are more than just a product of your past. You are the architect of your future. Welcome to Girl Emancipated. Welcome to season two, episode one of the Girl Emancipated podcast. I am your host, Veronica Armstrong. And in today's episode, we will focus on overwhelm and how to navigate day to day life when you're experiencing it. The reason I'm doing a podcast episode on overwhelm is because so many of my clients come to me experiencing overwhelm. As a matter of fact, I've experienced it. So many of my friends have experienced it. So I don't want a day to go by where we don't have an honest conversation about overwhelm and the need to do our best to manage it. So let me describe what overwhelm is and why it's so common. Overwhelm is when you are completely overwhelmed overcome by your emotions or feelings. And you can tell that you're experiencing overwhelm when you are experiencing helplessness or you feel paralyzed, meaning you freeze up and you're unable to function. Perhaps you even withdraw from friends and family because you do not feel like they can help you. You will also experience cognitive fatigue, meaning you may have difficulty concentrating or even making decisions. And sometimes the symptoms are even physical, such as irritability, fatigue. You could also experience a rapid heartbeat or even stomach pains. As a matter of fact, when I get overwhelmed by emotions, when it does happen and it doesn't happen often, I start to feel it in my stomach. So pay attention to those physical symptoms. And if you are a person who is prone to anxiety, you might feel even more anxious or restless and constantly worried about what you cannot control. Another thing you can experience is difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. Um, You can also start to procrastinate, delay tasks uh, that might make you feel overwhelmed. Or you can simply just lose interest in hobbies, work, or life. And sometimes you might even neglect yourself, as in you might not get up and work out. You might neglect self-care and doing the things that you need to do in order to remain healthy. And a big one that I've seen in some of my clients is always looking at things as if the glass is half empty, meaning you've become a bit more negative or jaded. So you might be wondering, why is overwhelm becoming increasingly common in today's society? Well, there are several reasons. I'm not going to cover all of them, but I'll cover a few. So one of the big ones that I've come across, which not so much in my generation, but in the younger generation, is social media and the pressure to be like other people or the pressure you put on yourself because you see what other people are posting and you are looking at yourself asking like, why am I not there? So you're basically comparing yourself. So you're putting undue pressure on yourself. Uh, Another reason is work pressure demanding work environments. And for some of us, it's having to go back into the office because you have become so accustomed to being at home, being around your family. And when you've been called to come back in the office, it becomes overwhelming because then you've got to think about how to navigate childcare, do this, do that. And it just becomes too much uh, for some people and it becomes overwhelming. Financial stresses. Uh, with the economy the way it is, with the uh, increasing cost of gas and rising uh, living costs and debt is becoming increasingly overwhelming for people. Because for some of us, it doesn't feel like our pay is increasing as quickly as the price of food and gas. Another reason, uh, lack of boundaries. 
If you have a difficult time setting boundaries between work and personal and life, uh, you can get overwhelmed with all of the roles and responsibilities and the constant switching that you have to do. Another reason, I know (laughs) this is something I have to check for myself, um, because my phone is always tethered to my hip and it's in my hand and I'm constantly on it for some reason, whether it's checking my email, whether, you know, because I actually do coach people on social media as well, whether it's coaching in groups that I'm in, I'm constantly looking at the news, I'm constantly looking at something on my phone. So it's information overload. I'm just overwhelmed by all of the information I'm taking in. And sometimes I can just kind of get lost and just lose my place and just get really frustrated. And I just have to to put it down. So those are some of the reasons that overwhelm has become increasingly common in today's society. So I'd like to ask you to do is to think about some of the things that I just shared with you. Look at those areas of your life. Are you experiencing overwhelm? And if you are, Ask yourself what you can do to reduce the impact all of the information or whatever it is that's happening is having on your life. And a little later in this episode, I'm going to give you some tips and some pointers that you can put into action today that will help you begin to manage overwhelm if you're experiencing it. So I'd like to share why managing overwhelm is of the utmost importance for you. And that's because overwhelm or chronic overwhelm can lead to chronic stress, which can lead to health problems such as cardiovascular issues or digestive issues. Chronic overwhelm can also lead to mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, and burnout. And it can also lead to an inability to make rational decisions because you're not thinking straight. And finally, it can lead to behavioral issues such as overeating, constant negativity, and substance abuse. So that's why it is critically important that we do our best to manage overwhelm because ultimately overwhelm, chronic overwhelm, is just going to cause problems far beyond what you are experiencing that is causing you the overwhelm. So before we get to the practical solutions, I want to talk about how we leverage the pillars to really help manage the overwhelm. So if you start with self-awareness, with your self-awareness, you can begin to recognize the signs of overwhelm in you because it looks different for everybody. So you can recognize it using your self-awareness. Self-acceptance is just accepting that it's okay, not beating yourself up for getting there, but recognizing You don't have to do everything. You don't have to solve everything and that it's okay to ask for help because asking for help is not a weakness. You can also leverage the courage pillar by standing up to whatever pressures or internal pressures or external pressures that are putting you in the position of feeling overwhelmed. So call up that courage, stand up, have a voice, stand your ground so that you can better manage your overwhelm. Then we can look at the empowerment pillar, taking charge of your schedule or setting boundaries and asserting yourself so that you are doing what's necessary to meet your needs. You are empowering yourself to make decisions that allow you to meet your needs, which will help you better manage those circumstances that could eventually cause overwhelm. And resilience. If you have strategies to deal with the overwhelm, then your resilience will help you bounce back from feelings of overwhelm and preventing you from burning out. And finally, spirituality, being able to ground yourself, meditating, making sure you go within, just remembering that there is a higher power who is always there to help you do whatever you need to do to quiet yourself and to center yourself so that you can bring yourself back to a space of peace and you are keeping overwhelm at bay. So here are six things you can do in the moment in order to help you deal with feelings of overwhelm. Number one, take a deep breath. Once you start to feel overwhelmed, things tend to go downhill quickly. So give yourself a break by relaxing, taking deep breaths, and slowing down your brain. Scan your environment and describe it to yourself. It will disengage your mind from your stressors and bring it back to reality. 
Number two is focus on what you can control. In any situation, there are things that you can control and things that you can't control. So keep your focus on those things that are within your influence that you can control. Number three, learn to set boundaries. It is important to say no to protect your peace if you find that there is something that you are being asked to do that doesn't align with who you are or what you want to do. Just learn to say no. Number four, focus on solutions. If you ever have me as a coach or a leader, what you will find out is this. One of the ways I keep myself grounded and I prevent myself from getting overwhelmed is when it gets to a point where things are getting a little hectic and and people are getting a little emotional. My first question is, okay, what can we do to solve the problem? Because if we can take it away from what's happening, what's out of control and squarely focus on that which we can do to change the outcome that will help you move forward. So number four is focus on solutions. And focusing on solutions is important because most of us make the mistake of focusing on the problem and imagining the negative outcomes. And that strategy, it decreases your ability and causes even more stress. So if you're going to put your brain to work, use it to find the best possible solution. Look at a way forward. Okay, number five is seek support. The importance of seeking help, whether through friends or family or professionals, is necessary sometimes because sometimes we can't think straight and we just need others to kind of bring us back to a a place of peace and to help ground us so that we can more easily come up with solutions to whatever the issue is that's causing overwhelm. And number six is mindfulness and relaxation. We talked about that before. So briefly introduced methods such as deep breathing and meditation and journaling so that you can center yourself. I'd like to share a personal story of a time in my life where I experienced overwhelm on a regular basis. If I recall correctly, I was in my 20s and I was working on Wall Street, I think at the time, because I grew up in New York. And I was living at home. We have a we had a two family house. I lived in the upstairs apartment with my my aunt, my youngest aunt. And um Despite the fact that I was working on Wall Street, for whatever reason, every single month, I would be very worried about my not being able to pay every single bill I had to pay. Now, mind you, I only paid $500 a month in rent. I was driving a Honda Accord you know, those beautiful Honda Accords back in the day. Um, And the payment was only two something a month. But I found myself every single month stressing about my ability to pay my bills. And I just remember one day asking myself, why do you do this to yourself every month? You do this every single month. But yet every single month, God has come through you have been able to pay your bills every single month. So why do you keep doing this to yourself? Because I would literally sit down and write things down and just get increasingly anxious about my ability to pay my bills until one day I just said to myself, this is ridiculous. I look back at all the months prior and I said, but I've been able to pay my bills every single month. So why am I doing this to myself? That's when I learned how my own thoughts and my own behaviors were causing me to become overwhelmed. But when I looked at the situation, and I really looked at the facts, I came to realize that everything was going to be okay. It had always been okay. I'm not exactly sure why I thought I wasn't going to be able to pay my bills. I mean, for the life of me, I tried to figure this out. But I I just I haven't been able to put my finger on what made me think that. But the lesson I got from that was this, is that I was causing all of these feelings and this anxiety unnecessarily. What I really needed to do was I needed to look at the facts of the situation. And I needed to look at what I could control. And once I started looking at the facts and what I could control, what I began to realize is that I truly had it under control, or I needed to make a couple of adjustments. So I ended up making a couple of adjustments and things that I was spending, cut back on spending, and then I was fine. But the bottom line is that lesson way back in my 20s still carries on in my life today. I have to stop. I have to rationalize why I'm overwhelmed, and I have to 
figure out how I'm going to get myself out of the situation. What are the solutions? That's what helps me. So hopefully that helps you understand that you're if you're experiencing overwhelm, you're not the only person who's ever experienced it. But there's always ways to get out of it. But more importantly, I will say this. I have said to myself for years, it is going to be okay. Because whatever that situation is that might cause stress or overwhelm, I always say to myself, this too shall pass. It will be okay. I just need to focus. I need to do whatever I need to do to survive. And I just need to keep putting one foot in front of the other until I get on the other side. So if you are experiencing overwhelm at the moment, or it's not uncommon for you to experience overwhelm, I just want to let you know, it's okay. It is not a failure on your part. It is normal. It's how you handle it that makes a difference. So with the right strategies and the right mindset, you can find the balance between being constantly overwhelmed and continuing on your journey of trying to live an emancipated life. So I have a challenge for you for this week. If you are feeling overwhelmed, I want you to do what we call the 54321 grounding challenge. And here's how you do this. If you find yourself overwhelmed, number one, find five things you can see, physically see. Number two, find four things that you can touch. Number three, find three things that you can hear. And number four, find two things that you can smell. And number five, find one thing that you can taste. In doing this, you are bringing yourself back to the current back to the here, back to the now, instead of focusing on your thoughts that are causing you to be overwhelmed. Okay, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for being a part of the Girl Emancipated podcast community. Together, we are breaking free of limitations, embracing our authenticity, and empowering ourselves to live the lives we're meant to live. Remember, hit that subscribe button and follow me at I am Coach Veronica on Instagram and Facebook to stay connected. And if you want to be a member of the Girl Emancipated Podcast Insiders community, where we will dig deep into the episodes and support each other in our desire to live an emancipated life, go to Facebook and search for the Girl Emancipated Podcast community. Or you can go to the link in the podcast episode summary below. I'd love to connect with you there. And if you are ready to start living an emancipated life, I want to invite you to get on the wait list of my signature coaching program called GPS Reset Academy. The doors to the academy are opening soon. And if you want to hear about it when they open, go ahead and get on that wait list by going to veronicacarmstrong.com forward slash waitlist. And you can learn more about the program there. Next week's episode is about redefining success on your terms so you can break free from expectations and foster stronger self-acceptance. So remember, whenever you feel overwhelmed, the power to find calm lies within you. Take a moment to breathe and ground yourself in the present moment. Bye for now. (laughs) 